So after we spend some time now creating a bot that can configure pizza products uh, by amount, size, and type uh, in a very flexible and conversational way, we are now at the point where we should create a basket so that we can actually order several types of pizza. What if I have some friends over and I don't want to just order one type of pizza, but uh, two? Uh, the only way to do it is by creating a, a basket type of feature that you know from online shops. Um, well, maybe it's not the only way, but it's. Uh, I think it's a good way because people know about the concept of a shopping basket. So in order to create the basket in this video, we're going to do two things. So we need to add our products to the basket and then we need a way to show the basket. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just create a new intent for uh, showing the contents of the basket. And while my previous intents, they all started with item, the ones where I configured my product or item. And now I am going to start the name of the intent with order because now we're at the order scope. So once I'm done configuring my uh, item, I leave the item level and then I'm at the order level where I can see my basket and finish my order. That's, uh, that's the way I see it. And we don't need an input context because we can call this function at any point. Um, for training phrases, let's add some basket. What's in my basket? Uh, what do I have in my basket? And uh, so this, remember this is not a shop uh with a, a visual user interface where people might see a basket icon so maybe they're not aware yet of the concept of a, a basket that this exists in this conversational um shop so they might also just ask something more generic like what do i have so far uh what pizzas do i no, let's actually leave out the pizza word because I'm uh, afraid there will be some crisscross matchings with the FAQ. Um, uh, and maybe just show my basket. Um, and then let's enable the web hook call. Hit save. And then I already went ahead and created a simple fulfillment function that just output a generic answer. I'll show you in a second. Hi, and then uh, what's in my basket? And then it's outputting me, there's, there's nothing in your basket yet. So basically I went and created an empty function uh, that just outputs, there's nothing in your basket yet. And later, in a bit we'll add uh, we'll actually list our basket there once but first uh, in order to do that we need to actually add our um, pizzas to the basket and where do we do that so we have this confirmation step item confirm dot yes and so this is where we also need to enable the web hook call and then we'll add our uh, products there so enable web hook call and then we'll need to get rid of this, which I added in the last video for my uh, small talk intents because we're adding this context programmatically now. Also, we don't need this. And for some reason, if I leave basket in here, there's some side effects and it won't work, but we'll add it in the fulfillment code now, uh, which is why the small talk uh, matching will still work. Um, Okay, so this is the set function show basket that currently just returns a pre-made um, reply. And then this is my confirmation, which I've already mapped here. So this is my confirmation function. 
So what's happening here? I am grabbing my item context. So remember when we were configuring the pizza in slot filling, the output context of those intents is item. And then I can grab my amount, size and type parameters from there. And uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll create a basket context, which I just mentioned before. And um, I'm doing this bit, uh, quite dynamically here. So first of all, I'm just creating an object for the context uh, with an empty parameters object. So this parameters, that's uh, exactly the same parameters as here. So this is kind of the pre-made structure of a context by Dialogflow. Um, and for to the parameters, I want to add another parameter now, which is going to be called items. And items is going to be an object with several pizzas. So I tried using an array here, but the arrays don't work. Um, I didn't find any details on it, but I'm assuming it's a similar concept than uh, as if you're trying when you're trying to add or save arrays to Firestore it doesn't work, they're not supported because um, Firestore is made for concurrency and there's, if uh, two clients are trying to add something to an array at the same time, it doesn't work. So it only supports objects. Um, uh, I am gonna explain the, the structure of this object in a second. But first of all, so if we are adding the first product, we're just doing it right away here. So I have an empty object and then I'm adding my product here. If there's already a basket existing, then what I'm doing here is grabbing the items saved in the basket and updating my empty object. So I have now an object with all my items, all my previous items, and then I'm adding my um my new item so this is already deployed so let's just go and say one uh, pepperoni large and then i say yes and as we can see we can uh that this response is now output and what is done now is that we added our basket context as well. We can see that the context is set, which is done programmatically. Let's see if we can see the context here as well. Yep, lifespan 50. So, and now I wanted to explain what the format of, of the basket is because arrays are not, oh, I've got a previous item as well uh, from using the bot previously. So the format of this items object is that I'm using the uh, response ID. So essentially because I, I can't use an array and just push a new item, I need a unique ID for my for every item. So I solved this by using the response ID, which is a different unique ID uh, that is generated for every uh, dialog flow response. So Using this, I am avoiding name clashes and overriding existing items, existing items. And also I have a reference to uh, the response where actually this was added to the basket. So yeah, so this already works. So now what do we need to do? Oh yeah, just for one more sentence about this. So when I'm adding the item to the basket, this is how you get the response ID uh, request.body. We can also, if we look at the Firebase console and look at the output. Um, so we have this log here, which is a default log that I didn't remove. Um, when you create your fulfillment, we're always logging the the body actually and then we can see here that within the body um, the response id is the first uh, item here so 
and this is what I'm making use of here when I add the item to the items uh, object. So I'm using request.body and then that's how I get the response ID. Okay, so far so good. Now we already have our show my basket function. Um, what's in my basket? Uh, but it still says there's nothing in your basket yet. So how do we list our basket contents? I am going to just copy and paste something that I made previously. Otherwise, it would take too long. So this is my full show basket function. I'm just going to replace this. So now we still have the there's nothing in your basket yet, but it's only output when there's no basket content yet. So when we can't find a basket, sorry, no, basket context, uh, when, when there's no basket context, then there's nothing in your basket. And we continue to output, there's nothing in your basket. When there is a basket, uh, we are retrieving the items from there. And then also we want to, because it's not an array, uh, in order to iterate over an object, we're also retrieving the item keys, which is done using this standard JavaScript function, object.keys. And then we have an array of my object keys. So in this case, uh, when I look at the basket context, da -da -da, where is it? It's here. here. This is the basket context and this is my items object. So I have two keys here, which are um, the response IDs. So now object dot keys dot keys is giving me an array um, of those keys. So now I have an array of length two in my current basket state, and then I'm just iterating over those, and I'm basically creating a string with my item configurations. So, so far you've got, and then I'm iterating over the items. Uh, there's going to be two iterations in this case. Um, and then I'm adding my item parameters here. So item is basket items, and then I'm using the key. So yeah, this is a bit cryptic. But uh, yeah, so here I get the amount, type, and size. And then in order to actually make this a full sentence, uh, let's hit deploy while I explain. In order to make this a full sentence, I am adding the word and in between to connect, except, um, no, sorry, I'm only adding the word and at the beginning. Uh, sorry, at the end. <laughs> no, I got it. So we're iterating here using a simple iterator, a counter. Um, so usually I just add a comma. So if I have three or more items and I'm listing them, I'm adding a comma. And then if I'm getting towards the end of the iteration and my uh, iterator is length minus one. So essentially is the last uh, element. I am adding uh, the word and, and then I'm adding and, and then this is the last item in my basket. So let's see if this works. So far you've got three fungi and one pepperoni. Okay, let's add something else. Do you have vegetarian pizza what size do you want your vegetarian in normal size how many would you like just one uh can you confirm yes okay so now i confirmed that it's asking me anything else we'll work on that in the next video where we finish the order um so now let's check what's in my basket. And now we have the list of three items. So unfortunately, I, I can't um, 
I can't just add a new line, so it would be nice to have a bullet point list or something. So this is just a long sentence. Uh, but as we can see, it works. It's iterating over my basket contents, adding the comma here. And when I hit, when I reach the last item in my basket, it's adding the word and. So yeah, that wasn't too hard, was it? Um, so now I can add things to my basket and I can list my basket. And in the next video, we're going to finish off the order. Um, so see you then.